What's going on everybody? It's your boy Sailor Turn Gamer and we are back in the building coming at you with another Dauntless video. If you are watching this video right now, this is taken from a live stream where we go through and we play Dauntless with you guys. I come through and we do any and everything, especially with the mastery system that's in place. There's so many things to do. So whether you are a fresh player straight into Ramsgate, don't feel like I won't play with you. Or whether you're a pro, hop in, the more the merrier, the funner it gets. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what, a build that kind of became my favorite build uh, when it comes to running the repeaters. Those that know me know that I like to run long range support. That is my build and that is my playstyle of choice. So when searching for a build to actually run that particular playstyle, I found something that is incredibly fun and might dare I say a little OP but nah it's just PvE so it's not I'm gonna go through the bill and talk to you guys about the choices that I made and the selections that I decided to go with and if you guys like the build be sure to give it a like and a share and join the fleet help us grow help more people know and get an opportunity to get their hands on this sweet dauntless content also feel free to enjoy the build for yourself and by the time you watch the video, I will more than likely have in the description a link to the Dauntless Builder site so you guys can see the build as well in a written form if that's what you like instead of the video format. So yeah, also along with that guys, uh, towards the end of the explainer, I'm going to be hopping into a hunt and uh, you guys can see how the build works in action. So I'll show you the loadout. Of course it's a repeated build so I'm going to go over that in depth but just take a quick look at the overall overview of our perk summary uh, so we're running six etheric attunement six conduit six cunning six evasion six molten and three fleet footed so with this build my goal and any build that i do is to try to maximize the amount of plus six tier six whatever you want to call it perks we can get because the stronger the perk the better the perk the better the slayer the more exciting and fun the hunt the goal is to play a particular playstyle, so we try to go for those sixes. Uh, the sixes that we have, they have a lot of playstyle synergy, and I'm going to explain that. So we're going with Etheric Attunement. The purpose of this build is a support build, and it is designed to buff our teammates with pure attack speed. And we do that by any means necessary. Also, our goal is to stack shields in order to remain protected so we can stay in the fight and stay in the thick of it what do i mean by that i'll break it down for you so let's break it down with our weapon and then we'll talk about the parts a little bit as we go through so with our weapon we're running the oxygen repeaters of course you guys know the the barrels those are interchangeable i like using the blaze barrel but it's really interchangeable depending on whatever you're hunting so that's a give and go Salvo Chamber. In my opinion, hands down, best chamber in the game. You got that in the Marksman's Chamber. Salvo Chamber is just amazing. There's so many benefits to using this outside of the damage perspective. And then to even consider the other perspectives, you still have your damage that you can do. Uh, it's always great and better, in my opinion, to use this in an Empower State for a Tri Burst. Your Captain's Grip, hands down, best grip, in my opinion. This is just good. And it's a part of the build that adds synergy and it helps the overall essence of the build. Right now we're running lightweight frame which is going to uh, increase our movement speed by 20% when we're at 6 or less ammo which allows us to close the gap for certain behemoths when they run away. Uh, right now we are at master work or master rank level 15. Uh, I think we're at 15 or 14 uh, with our repeaters and so we don't have lucky magazine and we probably will be switching over to lucky magazine once we get that, which is going to increase our critical chance the lower our magazine goes. So that's going to be something that we will be using. But as far as the my site, it's really up to you. Of course, I'm using lightweight frame, but you can also use capacitive magazine. I think that's a pretty great my slot in itself because, hey, you get more you get more ammo. You can continue to put down uh, shots, put bullets down range without having to reload a little bit longer. So that's pretty great. We're already in the thick of the fray, so extraction catalyst will be very great for this build as well. So you can consistently use your abilities. Those are great, but really the mod shot uh, slot is up to you. And like I said, I'll be trying out and probably using that lucky magazine once I get it. Let's move on. Stoneheart Prism. This thing makes the build. It is amazing. 
dealing damage has a chance based on damage dealt to grant a stacking refreshing 40 health shield that lasts for 12 seconds it stacks guys it's amazing that is a significant part of this build all right so we're using Rezakiri's helmet and for those of you that don't know once you get to tier 10 for any of the armor in the game your the ability that comes with it is going to go up to plus three you start off at plus one probably around the halfway point around five or six it goes up to plus two and once you get to ten it'll go up to plus three so we have a plus three conduit on that and we're using molten as we look over at our perk summary we're going with the plus six molten the reason why is because the more we can get these molten hearts to spawn the easier it is to grab them so if we can get them consistently to be all over the battlefield not only can we grab them but we can continue to support our teammates and they can grab them which is awesome if we look at the molten and you saw that we were running conduit as well and the etheric attunement so the more attacks we do etheric attunement is making it easier to actually do that to get our lantern charge up once we get our lantern charge up and we activate that conduit is going to go into place and we're getting 25 percent more attack speed for the entire squad for eight seconds which is great and we're like man what lantern can you do it's really up to you but i highly suggest you use strike zeal because of the hold ability which is going to allow you to get 15 percent increased movement speed and attack speed so that's even more movement speed and attack speed so essentially when you use your hold ability your lantern you're getting 40 percent attack speed which is insane and if you pair that with the repeaters right here you pair that with the capture script you're getting another 15 percent attack speed so you're getting 55 percent attack speed when you use that the faster your attack speed is the higher you can reload the big thing about this is the faster your attack speed the faster you can get your lantern charge up to have basically you're going to have your strikes zeal up the entirety of the fight so as you're in the fray your teammates are being are they're going to be able to use their axe attacks faster their hammer attacks their sword whatever it is Preferably if you're in a group with a guy using an axe or a hammer, it's their lucky day because they're able to attack that much more faster. Precisely 55% faster, so it's pretty great for them. Maybe wondering, man, what am I supposed to do about not getting hit? Well, this is where the evasion kicks in, plus 6. And you're wondering how we got the plus 6? Well, I like to use in my builds certain items that already have that exact mod slot that matches up with the perk that it comes with. So we got plus three evasion on there and this particular piece comes with that movement mod slot so we're using another plus three evasion to get plus six the evasion is clutch because with that plus six evasion is going to increase our dodge window by another 42 percent which comes in real clutch so while you're in the thick of the fray you're putting bullets down field your lantern charge is increasing every time you use your hold ability you're getting 40 percent attack speed 25 from the conduit and 15 from your choice of lantern to strike zeal so you're getting that up it's hard for them to hit you because you got that huge dodge window where you can dodge and essentially you're going to have your strike zeal buff up the entirety of the fight you're going to have your molten up all the time because they're going to be all over the battlefield and that be maybe the only time you have to get out is to get that molten and get back in if they run away you have your instant cast from strike zeal which is going to let you move 40 percent faster plus keep in mind you got your hold ability that's activated plus keep in mind we have plus three fleet footed that comes from our icm repeaters because we have an extra movement slot on there but it's great the reason why we chose the fleet footed is again to help following a dodge your movement speed is increased by 20 percent for three seconds it's only three seconds but 20 percent is significantly faster and you can feel it while you're playing so every time you dodge an attack you get movement speed which is allowing you to continually move around the battlefield that much more faster it's very hard to get hit and on top of all of that let's not forget Stoneheart Prism which is stacking up and stacking up and stacking up that shield every single time now this shield only affects you but in theory it keeps you incredibly safe by ensuring that as long as you're stacking and just shooting and doing as much damage as you can your shield is going to be up so high to where they can hit you but you got a huge shield it's not going to do anything to you and it's going to continue to allow you to just support your team in a fantastic way if you guys want to see gameplay of how this build works stand by
I promise you guys it's going to be incredibly awesome. I could go to something incredibly crazy. We're just going to go to just a regular old neutral patrol and we'll see how that works. I'm going with the neutral. But this build is capable of working from a neutral standpoint all the way up to I've tried heroic patrols and it's fantastic. And they're fun, man. This build is incredibly fun to be able to go around the battlefield to be able to support your team with all types of attack speed, all types of movement speed for yourself and your teammates when they're surrounded by you. Definitely super, super hard to get hit with the massive window for your dodge and vulnerability. And for dodging, you get that increased movement speed along with having that as an instant so you can proc that whenever you like. It is incredible. So stand by and enjoy that because this build is awesome. Alright, so now that we're in here, we can, I can explain how this works, it's pretty simple, easy process, and it's just going to be fun knocking it out with my boy Shrike as well, poor Shrike. So, as we go through, first shot, you get your Moses to proc, always first shot, there's the proc, there's the dodge, you see the movement speed that's coming in for 3 seconds. Movement speed again, so clutch. Now we gotta put a lot of damage on this guy. He's quick. So ain't no telling, huh? How fast he's gonna be. I would like to say as well, for pesky behemoths like Starn, no problem for the kill. Look at that, we got it already. We got the, the extra attack speed. You want to stay close around the behemoth and your teammates to give them that speed. Always want to use that. Use your tri burst whenever you have it. Be sure to throw down your buff. I like to grab it myself if it's empowered so that my teammates always get them. You see that? It's three more moments. So it's always up. You just want to surround the behemoth. As long as you're around them, your teammates are around them, they're getting that attack speed. Don't hesitate to roll. Sometimes they get you, bro. But don't hesitate to roll. I wanted to be able to show off the shielding that we got. He's a little bit fast. Hard to put the damage down because he moves a lot. But now we, we're getting it. coming now. So it's already at 120, right? It's at 240. Now it's coming. 280. Now I've seen this thing proc as high as 1500, guys. You get a 1500 shield, it's pretty hard to die. Look at that. Gone. I just gotta get it back. But as we look, our conduit proc. And it really comes in handy with the tri burst because the more damage you do, the higher your shield can go. And essentially, you have that strike up 24 7. We're already at 280, 320. 350. 440. Look at that, he tried to hit us, that dodge window, guys. Boom. Can't hit us, can't do nothing to us. We're already at 680. And our teammates are getting a lot of attack speed. And I promise you guys, this works on any behemoth, especially the big ones. The bigger they are, the easier it is to get. That's fine, look, we just got knocked down, no damage.
trying to do all that flight stuff. We don't have way to strike, so we can't knock them down. Can't hit it. Dodge one, though. Look at that. Hard to get hit with that dodge one, though. 200 kills. More strike. I didn't want to do it something like that. I want to do something more complex, but we don't get it. I'm sorry, but I feel bad for him. It's the build is definitely capable of doing something else. But it doesn't change anything. My man just dipped. And look at that. We took a little bit of damage, but as you see, we have a plus 760 shield that proc. So if we get hit, we're not taking any more damage from that. So as long as you're consistently on the target, putting shots in his face, proccing your tri burst, throwing down your buff, very, very difficult to get hit. Especially with that dodge window. And the beauty of it is it only supports itself. Because when you don't get hit, you can see you have an X that stack up. And they can try all they want with that dodge window. The only time you get hit is when you make a mistake. And look at the motion clock in the game. Reload real quick with that empowered. We'll draw that down. Oh, look at that. He tried to get me. Where are, look at that shield. Look at that, he just hit us. Look at that, he just hit us, the shield is up. The shield can take all of that. Great plug. We already have 544 on the shield, look at that. He got hit, it dropped down, we took 200 damage, but it's all straight to shield. Now I was gonna put this video out earlier today, but I didn't because I was testing this particular perk. And after a whole day of testing this perk, it's the best prism. This is the best, hand, hands down, the best prism. Maybe not for damage, but for survivability. And isn't that the most important thing? I don't know. I'll leave it to you guys to decide. But. This build is a fantastic build to play. It's incredibly fun. It's If you enjoy supporting your teammates, you're going to get a kick out of this build. Being able to increase your attack speed to constantly reload as if you have a machine gun. I mean, there's no secret sauce to the attack speed build. I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of variations on that particular build. But when it comes down to what makes this build special, is using a stone heart prism, guys. Stoneheart Prism, combination of Fiery Grease, plus the Strikes, strikes Zeal is going to give you the speed that you need to dodge around like lightning. I mean, this build is incredibly fun. If you don't believe me, try it out yourself. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a like and a share. Again, guys, it helps us grow and it helps more people know the fantastic things that we do here so more people can enjoy that dauntless content and join the fleet with that being said this sale will be out in the open ocean peace